ماي نايم علي أحمد علي وبونا اليمن وكمان هي 50 50 ماي ماي صوت شيلس الله صوت صوت شيلس for working, you know. Before, you know, he didn't British. And I come to here, uh, what the, what the work with my brother, my brother showed me everything, you know. The work I did on the ship was called a document of fourth engineer or stoker fireman and it was very hot and difficult but that was the job that our people did at the time. remember when I was a kid uh, my dad took me to see this Arab guy on the ship. I think the ship must have been in the middle docks or something. And that time, you know, the captain, yeah, no problem. We, goes to, we went down into the engine room, actually, and I always remember these gleaming pipes and things like that and furnaces, you know, thinking, oh, I'm under water, you know, this is on, you know, you're under water. Big stopcocks, wheels, brass dials and all that, you know, and I thought it was great then. Later, I realised that they've always worked in this part of the ship. And then further realised during the war, which part of the ship was attacked would have been the very place where they worked. So they didn't really stand much of a chance of, of getting out. When the torpedoes went into the engine room, that was it. They would batten the hatches from above. Those people down below were expendable. <laughs> Part of the town was Leggett and Holborn. The condition of the area, we thought, you know, we didn't really take notice of the condition because we thought that was the norm. The, the majority of the properties that I'm talking about is no longer there, they were cleared by the, the slum clearance. They were in a bit of a bad condition, but uh, we didn't think so at the time. <laughs> Well, the boarding houses, at that time, they were like a community centre. It brought people together in, in one place when they came back from sea. They had somewhere nice and warm to sleep, food prepared for them, because it wasn't just like a bed and breakfast. It was Everything was provided there. They always had like somebody in charge, you know, the, which was regarded as their elder who everybody respected and listened to, to what he says and, that, and everybody trusted as well. And the ones that were married, obviously, they still, that was a meeting point for them, where they played card dominoes, things that entertained themselves. It's like a, a social gathering. <laughs> No matter how old you are or how bad your memory is, I always believe that memory can be sort of like brought on by a certain smell. There's things that, you know, I've come across going getting fresh chickens. You know, the, there used to be the, an old guy, Mr. Fadder, Abdullah Had Fadder. He used, to, he used to kill the chickens in the backyard, you know, so he had a fresh chicken and dad used to take it home, gut it and, and uh, feather it and... You know, I mean, see, everybody says that things taste like chicken, but there's nothing tasted like the chicken in, in my youth. You know, he was a nice old man, and I used to like the gizzard of the of the chicken, and he knew that. And when my dad used to bring me down to the board house, he used to always wink at us. He saw us with his big brown coat, and he used to pull chicken gizzards out of his pocket. You know, since I've, I've thought, how, how can he keep chicken gizzards in his pocket, you know? <laughs> well, he's... 
those uh, famous or infamous conflicts are seen as race rights and I don't believe so. The Arab seamen, the Yemeni seamen were actually preferred by ship owners, captains, etc. because they were loyal to the ships that didn't jump ship or have problems with alcohol and losing ships. You know, so it wasn't it wasn't a race right, it was just, you know, some people had different different ideas and they were of different colour. I've never had any problems as far as racism or anything was concerned. I mean, you get the old jokes, jokes, you know what I mean? People cracking jokes about black people and things like that. And I just used to laugh it. I never used to take it, you know what I mean? And I used to give them as good as they gave me anyway. So they used to like that side of me, you know, that I can take it and give as much as they give me. So I think I got along well with them. We use the mosque where we provide for the elder people and, and for most of the community a meal where they can come and join together and sit and discuss and talk. At least it's a meeting point where we give them advice about whatever that's going around and basically help them. That is a, is a plant. It comes actually from the source itself, wrapped in banana leaf. Qat plays a big role in our community because that's what brings us together. Qat, traditionally in Yemen back home, is the, the thing you solve all your problems with. Because you sat with the, with the elder of the village. And we carried that over here. And it's a social gathering where you've got like white British, they go out for a drink in the pub and socialise and have fun and that. We have fun that way. We chew together, we talk about our problems, we we discuss different things and that where in a class session you can sit for five, six, seven hours. So you can guarantee that guy is gonna be sitting listening to you all that time. <laughs> I don't think they'll go on much longer, unfortunately. There's only one that's been used as a as a boarding house now as such. And I don't think that it'll be long before because obviously the the population's getting old. The new people that are coming into the community uh, aren't using boarding houses. Obviously there's no seafarers, so you know there's no need. As for how long that's gonna exist. You know, God only knows. Well, we've got new generations, obviously, with natural progression, you know, people having, having children, so, you know, you have a new generation that way. But we've also got a new generation where there's people literally come from Yemen who are British by right of the father's British nationality. So we've had a few people coming from Yemen. The Yemen community has had a big, big impact on South Shields, a very big impact. We are part of the community, we are the community. All my life, and a lot of people I know, all our lives, we've strove to educate people into what we are bring them into our place of worship, bring them into our homes and see that we're not whatever stereotype is flavour of the month, either a terrorist or Aladdin. It's either that or the other. And I made a great deal of, of, of friends, lifelong friends. This town's always had, you know, it's had famous community relations, and I think a lot of the rest of the country, or be the, the the rest of the world, should should look on South Shields as good practice for community relations. I 
Shabbat shalom.